What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another video on Transformers Movie Universe history. And today we're going to be talking about the first evil human organization that almost succeeded in destroying the Transformers. Just like other iterations of Transformers lore, humans are bipedal and usually tiny organic beings found on Earth and other similar planets. They're more or less the neutral party whose world is caught in between the conflict of the Autobots and Decepticons. More often times than not, the film series has shown that mankind has more in common with the alien off-worlders than most if any of them could believe. As you're all aware, humans as a species have very different viewpoints and beliefs about subjects in their life. On the subject of Transformers, some humans support them and what they fight for. We've seen them form organizations such as NEST, which is a military alliance between the Autobots and Special Operations Forces from the US and UK who are tasked with hunting down Decepticons hiding around the globe. So depending on how well they played with the Fleshlings, the Cybertronians were welcomed with open arms by certain groups. But there were others who despised the Cybertronians and wished to destroy them and salvage them for weaponry. Many more still find their presence on Earth largely as lucrative as it is an oddity, with some devoting the entirety of their lives discovering their connection to Earth while some have the unfortunate luck of stumbling onto their conflict. <laughs> Since the live-action Bay vs. Infancy, we've seen the likes of Sector 7, Cemetery Win, and the Transformers Reaction Force try to come up with tactics to combat any and all Cybertronians on Earth. All were very effective in their approach, but failed miserably in stopping the robot war. But there was one secret group that came close to completely eradicating every Cybertronian, and it all stemmed from one human who was fueled by vengeance. This particular story takes place in the six issue comic book miniseries titled Transformers Nefarious. Set after the events of Revenge of the Fallen, the series details the Autobots making a desperate alliance with Soundwave and Theodore Galloway to investigate the initiative, an unknown human group with designs on the Transformers. And it was led by Carter Newell. One of the Fallen Seekers charged with scouring the Earth for the Tomb of the Primes, Fortress, had no desire for humans to become involved in the Transformers war. As time and the millennia rolled by and no traces of the tomb were found, the Seekers grew increasingly bored and frustrated, and Fortress found their quest was slowly transforming into a twisted competition as the Seekers battled each other over the smallest possible leads to the tomb's location. In 1929, one such contest went wrong. Fortress, who was sporting a biplane alternate mode, was strafing a truck mode Seeker, causing the other Transformer to crash into a car containing the young Carter Newell and his parents. Newell's parents died on impact, but Carter himself survived to lay eyes upon the shocked fortress who had never wanted to harm humans. Carter swore a vendetta against the Transformers. With the money he inherited and the help of wealthy backers, he formed the initiative and made it his lifelong mission to seek out and capture Transformers for analysis. At some point in time, Fortress was captured by the initiative forces and dissected and reduced to a head that apparently served as the living core of the initiative's mobile base. The base could break up into a number of wheeled vehicles and move around relatively freely. Transformers were captured, placed under the initiative control, and put in the base's deep freeze. As a result, the initiative was able to equip its soldiers with advanced weaponry and following the second major Transformer incident on Earth to begin Project Nefarious to create a new artificial Allspark cube. The initiative began to search for the appropriate sources of energy to power their creation. They captured and reconstructed Ravish following the Decepticon's destruction at Giza and sent him to Guantanamo Bay to appropriate the remains of some appliance bots. Ravage ended up in the Kingdom of Petrochemicals which was destroyed by the US military. The initiative sent troops to the remains of the plant to drain power from the appliance bots. They were spotted by Buzzsaw which led to them fighting Soundwave's animalistic Decepticons. When the Autobots arrived and attacked the Decepticons, the initiative troops were forced to withdraw. Despite the interference of the Autobot and Decepticon forces, Newell assured the initiative board that they had successfully garnered a good deal of energy. After the meeting, however, he grumbled at their short-sightedness. But the initiative's board leader, Hank Kirkpatrick, warned him that if the Allspark threw a tantrum, it could conceivably destroy the entire planet. Despite Kirkpatrick's misgivings, the cube neared completion, and Newell ordered a hacker by the name of Ingrid to access the government's computer systems and erase all record of the Hoover Dam, so an initiative tactical assault team could be moved in. Meanwhile, information gleaned from Ravage's mind led some foolhardy Decepticons to the initiative's Wendover, Utah facility, but the location was destroyed by the failsafe the initiative had left behind. Newell made sure Ness was subtly informed of the Decepticons' presence there. While the initiative team started drilling at the dam, NSA agent Theodore Galloway had noticed the location's disappearance from Sector 7 records and began heading there to investigate. 
New Well ordered Wolf, head of the initiative Steep Freeze Division, to defrost one of their stock of Transformers, and Wolf dispatched Ransack to attack Galloway's helicopter. Ingrid questioned Newell over what exactly his motives were and what was stored in Isolation 1, but he merely told her she asked too many questions. Kirkpatrick reminded everyone that they were staring down the barrel of Global Armageddon if the mission at the dam failed, but the diversion of Galloway bought the team at the dam the time they needed. A short time later, Newell paid Fortress a visit in Isolation 1, informing the Decepticon that his kind would soon be destroyed. With the new energy infused into the Allspark, Newell himself was wired up to it. Literally, it was plugged directly into his brain. His first act was to go before the initiative board, and when they voted to have him stand down as project leader, he sent a post through the communications link. The post brought their office equipment to life, and the newly created AllSpark mutations slaughtered the board members, leaving him to declare that he had taken over the initiative. After paying another visit to Fortress, Newell was met with news that the Autobots and Decepticons were mounting a combined strike on the initiative base. With the base under attack, Newell ordered the rest of the initiative control Transformers be thawed to counterattack. He revealed to Kirkpatrick his true intent for the initiative, to wipe out all alien life on the planet. As Newell began to draw on the Allspark's energy, Kirkpatrick realized that he was dooming everyone. He seized Newell's arm in an attempt to stop him, but Newell responded by frying him with a burst of energy, reducing him to a charred skeleton. Optimus Prime attempted to reason with Newell, but Carter telepathically announced their destruction and began to terminate all Transformer life. He was fortunately interrupted when Reedman attacked him, causing him a serious injury. He destroyed the Decepticon, but requiring time for the Allspark to mend him, Newell attempted to flee the battle in a small, mobile section of the base. When he refused all the calls to stop, Optimus rammed the truck, destroying it. Newell staggered from the mangled vehicle and spotted Optimus preparing to destroy the Allspark. He was ready to stop Prime with a blast of energy, but was terminally interrupted when Buzzsaw blew a hole clear through him. Optimus pulled the rapidly destabilizing Allspark and was ready to feed it into his own spark to stop the deadly chain reaction from building within it. Luckily, that turned out to be unnecessary, as Fortress took the Allspark from him and carried it into space, where it exploded safely. And that's where the story ends. As you can see, Carter Newell descended into utter megalomania and he came very close to not only destroying every Cybertronian, but also humans in the entire world. Which is crazy, because no other human or organization had ever gotten this far in the actual movies. Something else worth mentioning is that Newell and the Initiative posed such a threat that it got both the Autobots and Decepticons to join forces for the first and only time in the Bay continuity. I just think it's so profound that the Allspark, an object that was solely responsible for bringing the Cybertronians to life, could also be used to destroy the Cybertronians if it wound up in the wrong hands. That's what you call masterclass storytelling. Just want to give a major shout out to this story's writer and longtime Transformer historian, Simon Furman. He was the individual responsible for writing this amazing hidden gem, and he's mainly responsible for most of the TF lore. Here's hoping Paramount wisens up and hires this man to comprise a script for a Transformers movie in the not too distant future. But with that, I'm going to end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Transformers Movie Universe History because I had an absolute blast making it. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree that Carter Newell is one if not the best human antagonist in the Bayverse? Or do you think others such as Cemetery Wind's Harold Adinger was more effective in almost wiping out Transformers? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, I ask you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than 1,000 subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. You